guys, welcome back. This is Lil Fear Fear here, and today we will be working on this tiny little Atherin Hustler locomotive. It is a band drive unit, and I already do have the shell loose, and so, oh, there it is. And so the issue we have with it mainly is a dirty commutator and is missing some rubber bands, so it should not be able to roll freely. So let's get over to the workstation. Here we are now over at the workstation and I am just gonna take off the shell and go clean that one off camera. So just move that over to the side. And here's our little engine here. If we can get it real up and close for you. Yep. You can tell that it is missing its rubber bands. And its wheels are not terribly dirty, but it's not the main issue because if you get into the light here, yeah, you can see how dirty the commutator is. That really does need a good scrubbing to it. Maybe just some oil overall, because I did run it in place just having the motor spin and it was in need of some oil. I might also replace the couplers on either end of this. So uh, we have a lot to look forward to. So let's move on down. And let's first take off the wheels. I will re be replacing the rubber bands with these smaller two ones. Maybe if I need some larger ones later on. But let's open her up. This is my first time with an Atherin band drive engine. So I'm just getting used to how to open it up. These two screws here should open up the side plates. If I can get my screwdriver to lock on. Put a washer with that one. And I can go. Oh, I also, never mind, that was a different thing, sorry. That was on a different engine. At the store, I was looking at two different engines, and yeah, I saw an issue with the other engine, so I didn't pick it up. But, there you go, those are our wheels out of the bearings. Let's take a look at these bearings here. I believe they are dry, so I do need to put some oil on those. Let's first get on to cleaning the wheels. This will take a while. There we go, we're looking shinier already. Back to the other wheel. That wheel's still, yeah, very flat. This should be a quicker tutorial or restoration. Since this engine does not have any lights that need to be fixed in any sort of way, it's just kind of a rubber band replacement and cleaning the commutator. There we go. Back over to the other wheel. That wheel is real set. It's looking a lot better than it originally did. Those both in the light. See the shininess difference? It's very subtle because these wheels are not terribly dirty to begin with, but let's keep on going. I do not believe this engine has a real life prototype to it. I believe it is just a little switcher that Atherin made out of their own custom design. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section down below, but that is what I've kind of found on the internet. Oh, missed a spot. Final wheel. All right now, take that and go, pick up the rubber bands and go, try to blow off the, ah, there we go. Clean off the workstation a little bit. Now we have our wheels nice and clean. Let's move over to the side plates here. Oh, the other one is still connected. 
Just seeing how loose the motor mounting is. Should not be too bad. There we go, I can push it down more. And so I'm going to oil up these guys with some Bell 102, as per usual. Let's take a look at this commutator and start cleaning that off. There are better ways to clean commutators, but at the moment I do not have anything such as a fiberglass pencil, so you do want to be careful if you are using something like Q-tips, or as the British call them, cotton buds, I believe. <laughs> Sorry if I sound a little stuffy, my nose is a little congested. Commutator's just looking a little bit better. Still pretty blackened. All right, it's looking a little bit better. Still, I do need to invest in a fiberglass pencil because that will make this run, or make this part of the job a lot easier. So if you are fixing up older engines, you might want to take a look into that as well. Light and glare on that. All right, I'm gonna oil the motor up a little bit. Make sure you get all the bearings, but not to oil the commutator or the, this part here. Do not oil that, that is, able to cause fires in the engine, and that is not something that you want happening to your engine. All right, set this down, and now I'm going to go wash the shell. All right, now one thing I am also doing is I'm replacing the couplers on these things. And so that is just as simple as unscrewing the old coupler box and sticking a new one exactly right back on. So I just unscrewed this old one, and then my other one just put on the floor, right. and then putting no, that's also an old one, but there it is. There, kind of just stick this back on with the coupler, proper coupling housing, screw it back on, and then you have a working set of new couplers. So I'm gonna do that at a shot here. All right, now here comes the difficult part. So I'm taking the two rubber bands, at least starting out with one right here, here, and then I have to go up, and actually it doesn't matter since I popped up. All right, there we go. I can pop this thing back on. I didn't need to pop it off, but it popped off kind of by itself. Let me see if I can try to get all those little wrinkles out of the line. Wrap the other rubber band around the other wheel. Almost like putting traction tires on, now that I think about it. Socket, pull up and over. And I like to move it to the middle, or since that way. And make sure it's aligned on all the rollers right. And then, I'm gonna hit this via trusted design. Just stick it back, and it's on sockets bearings there you go oop didn't get that one got one but i didn't get there there we go got both of them time to lay it on its side and try to screw those back in Or 
side. Don't want to tighten it all the way to make sure that I get both sides at least locked in first. All right, now I forgot, but right before you put on the track, you have to make sure you have this little connection bar on so that the engine can still pick up power. Slide it under back where I found it. There we go. All right, now we can take a look at it on the tracks. All right, now let's see if this engine picks up power. Going in the corner. It's a little jittery. There it goes. So it wants to run in place. It hits that point and stops. There it is. And it's off. And it's going by again. And it shorts out on the point like the other switcher does. But we do have a successful engine now. Uh, we'll and so now let's, we're going to go back to workstation and put the clean body back on the engine. All right, now fitting the body is just as simple as taking it off. You just have to have this whole little nub on the engine. Oh, slide it on. There's a fingernail one side and then his finger now on the other side and boom the body is now snapped in and our little hustler is going to be hustling again all right now let's get this engine hauling some rolling stock all right now let's see how slowly and controlled i can back up this engine Oof. It's a quick runner, and I think it is coupled up, and we'll set it off. All right, Ooh, and it stopped on the point, just a second. There we go, and it's off. Now let's try to see if I can park the engine in the shot here. And coming in pretty hot. There we go. Oop, back to the hmm. There we go. <clears throat> Alright, that sums up this restoration video. I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed fixing up this little rubber band drive. It was a new experience for me since I had not dealt with them yet. And it was also nice to put some more modern couplers on the front of it, as well as it being in fairly good shape. If you made it this far in the video, please consider subscribing or liking or commenting what you think about this engine. I'd love to hear what you guys think about it. And I'd like to thank you guys again, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.